What is up, lovely researchers? It's Kevin. Welcome back to Method Mondays, a series where I talk about different UX research methods and how to conduct them. Today, heuristic evaluation. So, what is it? A heuristic evaluation is where an expert, in this case you sexy thing, audits or reviews a website or app for usability problems using known usability principles or heuristics. Think of it as being a building safety inspector. Your job would be to make sure the building adheres to certain safety standards. There's a fire escape, stairwells, exit signs, no obstructions, no confusing exit paths. Heuristic evaluations are the same thing. Your job as a UX badass is to do an inspection of the website or app to make sure the interface adheres to certain usability standards. Got it? Now we went through what a heuristic evaluation is. Now I want to talk about what it's not. A heuristic evaluation is not a replacement for actual usability testing with real users. If you haven't watched my other video on usability testing, go watch it here. I'll link it down below and do a little card thing up here. A heuristic evaluation is also not useful for testing the overall experience of a product. That comes from multiple methods and triangulating the data to form a bigger picture. Also, I strongly believe that heuristics are not universal and they might not even apply to make your product successful. Heuristics are just heuristics. Let me, let's actually look up the definition. So let's look it up on Google. It says enabling a person to discover or learn something for themselves. A heuristic process <laughs> or me okay that doesn't really help. Uh, let's look at the Wikipedia definition. Heuristic technique often simply called heuristic is any approach to problem solving not guaranteed to be optimal, perfect, logical, or rational, but instead sufficient for reaching an immediate goal. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not really satisfied with that definition. So let's bust out my psychology textbook from university from centuries ago. <laughs> All right, let's look it up. 275. Okay, you can't see this, but fast and efficient strategies that may facilitate decision making, but do not guarantee that a solution will be reached. According to Swinkles 2003, ooh, I really like this definition. Heuristics are mental shortcuts or rules of thumb that are often but not always effective uh, when approaching solving a problem. So rules of thumb mental shortcuts. I think that paints a pretty good picture. Heuristics are not the end-all be-all of usability research. A heuristic evaluation is just one chapter in that story. In my opinion, testing of real users will always give you better evidence. If you need to do one because of time or resources, let's talk about how. Step one is to get a few other UX experts to evaluate the product with you. At least two, four to five is sufficient. I know people who've just done it by themselves. Caveat is one data point. Now these other UX people do not have to be researchers. They could just be people who understand UX principles and maybe they have some exposure to it. There are principles and guidelines that you can use. Step two, decide what tasks are most important for your product. And evaluate those. Step three, pick the most appropriate set of heuristics to use. Now I talked all this time about the heuristics, but what exactly are they? There are three sets that I've used in the past and I'll link them down below. Starting with the most common set of heuristics by Nielsen Norma Group, it's the Nielsen heuristics. This is the most widely known the most commonly used set of heuristics there are 10 heuristics in my experience they're good enough but i've never actually used all 10 heuristics for a certain product because they just didn't apply and that's okay sometimes they apply and sometimes they might not and 
You might not even want those heuristics to apply to your product, depending on what your product is. I would use this set if you want to do it really quick and dirty, and you plan to do actual usability testing of real users. The second set of heuristics is by Susan Weinshank. It's more robust, but it's more time consuming. It's more firepower than I've ever needed, um, but if you're on a tight budget and you really want to dig deep, this is the set that you want to use. What I'm showing here is a spreadsheet made by Jordi Sanchez. It basically takes Susan Weinshank's view on UX design, the human mind, and applies it to usability heuristics. As you can see in the spreadsheet here, you can mark the result of your inspection, pass fail, and denote the severity. The third and last set of heuristics that I'm going to talk about today are from Microsoft called the UI tenants and traps. So I have the set of principles, but I believe you have to actually buy them online. But anyway, the eight principles include being understandable, discreet, beautiful, comfortable, responsive, efficient, protective, and forgiving. But the details of it, I'm not sure I can share. So sorry, only really giving you two sets. That was step three, picking your set. Step Four, go off and do it individually. <laughs> spend an hour or two, you don't need to spend eight hours. Create a template that everybody would be using. I'm gonna share my screen to show you what a template could look like, something that I've used in the past. What I'm showing here is an example. So let's walk through it. Uploading files to Google Drive. This is the task that we're evaluating. Remember, we are evaluating the most common tasks in our system and seeing if the usability adheres to those principles or heuristics. On the left, I have a screenshot. <laughs> On the right, I have pass and underneath it are the heuristics that do well. Um, then I have pass with difficulty. The, the, these are heuristics that you can do it, but it's a little difficult. And finally, on the bottom, we have fail, which are heuristics that the system does not adhere to, and they violate these heuristics. The second slide, um, it's just a different format you can use. Uh, instead of having the task, I have the heuristic at the top, and then you list the tasks. Step five is once everybody has done it on their own, come back together and compare your answers. Compare what you found. Was this a pass? Was it a fail? Did you all find the same thing? And kind of hash it out, discuss it together. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of heuristic evaluations. The pros are that it's fast, it's super cheap, and that you can find a lot of potential usability issues. Another pro is that it provides more evidence when you conduct actual usability tests. Now the cons are that you're testing it. You and your UX experts are testing it, not real users. It doesn't capture performance and it doesn't capture user experience, just usability issues. And like I said before, not all the heuristics would apply to your product. Now, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that it only captures usability issues and if it adheres to usability principles. It doesn't tell you if a product is good or bad. You could find all the usability issues, you could fix all of them, but if your product is a smart Wi-Fi enabled juicer, you're still in a world of trouble. So that's the rundown on the heuristic evaluation method for UX research. If you found this video helpful, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon. I make videos on all things UX research related to help you become the most badass UX leader. Mad love, peace.